What caused Halo Infinite to launch so bad? What continued to make it so poor? We have real testimonies from X343 and a real understanding of what happened. But guys, I gotta be honest with you. I am tired of talking about how much of a failure Halo Infinite is. And so the only way I could really convince myself to make this video is that it will be my last video talking about Halo Infinite in such a raw, depressing way. But one last time, I want to discuss and break down everything we know about what happened with this game. And it is sad. It's heartbreaking. This is a new year, though. We're moving forward. Halo Infinite seems on the back burner now, and it looks like we are moving into the Halo 7 news cycle here soon. So with that being said, the fact is, is that Halo Infinite took about seven years to release, and it was half-baked. Why? Teams at the studio were completely scrambled, making conflicting decisions, were trying to basically save money. Microsoft was trying to save money by doing contractor workers. Now, it's no secret that Slipspace Engine is a problem, but it turns out that that isn't actually even really the root cause, right? What is the root cause? Well, my source said back in the day, and we got a lot of sources to go through today, is that basically they didn't need to make a good Halo game, right? This is what some of the management said, supposedly, at 343. And they needed to just make a C-rated game, something just to get out the door because the brand of Halo would be enough. I think the quote that my source told me, it was along the lines of, we don't need to make a great game, it's Halo. Well, how is that turning out nowadays? It really does feel like most people have moved on, even though I still think that there's millions of sleeper Halo fans out there, people that would be more than happy to pick up Halo 7 and Halo 8 if it delivered. But as I will talk about at the end of this video a bit more, basically 343's name needs to change. It has been burned too much. There is too much negativity around this company for it to be able to sell a new Halo game. 343's Halo is not going to bring back Halo. And that's kind of the unfortunate truth about Halo 7. I think that unless they really knock it out of the park this time, the trust is not there. I've seen Halo fans and friends completely hate what Halo is now and do not want to even take a look at it, right? So Halo Infinite's creative vision was apparently in a flux until really late in its development. Actually, the company was apparently split into different groups where teams were basically fighting over resources making conflicting decisions. One developer describes the process as four to five games, Halo games, being developed at the same time, okay? So this clearly is not a good way to develop a game. And there was bad management from the beginning. And it didn't even really begin development until that E3 2018 trailer that everyone was so hyped about. Now it's painful looking at this as we talk about this one good last time is that, man, the disappointment is immense. There is no deer, rhino, sand, <laughs> no jungles or beaches or these beautiful vistas here shown. Instead, what we got was kind of like a badly optimized Minecraft world at times, it looks like anyway. <laughs> and the sandbox is so minimal. I really wish 343 would come out and really talk about this themselves. I mean, they did with MCC. Frank O'Connor went into a massive detail of exactly what happened for MCC when it was time to reboot it. Actually, the company was apparently split into different groups where teams were basically fighting over resources making conflicting decisions. In fact, what my source said, which was correct about many things later on, so I do believe that my source I keep referencing is accurate and truthful here, is that they actually tried to make Halo Infinite a hero shooter. So think Overwatch, right? It really does sound like a 343 decision, right, to completely uproot what works and build something in their own vision. I think Halo Infinite ended up kind of landing on its feet as far as the gameplay mechanics go, and that's good, but why could this happen again, right? Well, this is a big issue at 343, and it is the contractors, right? So contractors was basically a way for them to save money. And if they had contractors, from my understanding, they didn't have to pay them health benefits, or at least very much, right? Pay paying for an employee for a whole year could be basically a million dollars in 
potential liability, right? So they would instead hire contractors. The problem with this is that they would only have three, six month or 12 or 18 month long contracts. And once their contract ended, even if they were doing really good with developing Halo Infinite, they still would not be able to gain access to the studio for six months, right? Now there is a lot of reviews and talk about this on Glassdoor, but basically the culture was so much like a revolving door it makes sense why Halo Infinite is like scrambled eggs, right? I mean, so many people came into the, you know, into the studio to work on core features, core scripting and engineering of the base game itself. And when they had to troubleshoot or change something, well, the person or people that made the engine what it is were long gone. They weren't, they didn't even have the original people there. And it wasn't really helpful to the employees or contractors because they couldn't even invest in this, right? They did all of this to essentially save money. Microsoft did, right? They put too much responsibility on the contractors to do key jobs, right? So big shout out, by the way, to Rebs Gaming, where a lot of these sources were actually kind of collaged together. I've left a link down in the description for that. But my own trustworthy source told me that at the peak of this disaster, this is how it basically led to the engine being broken, right? Because troubleshooting the engine was a massive headache because the original engineers that developed the engine already left, right? And so this developer said, except that's the problem. Those positions were needed post-launch. Too much responsibility were put on the contractors. And that is what is really needed. More partner studios that take care of people and rotate from project to project. And this is another whole thing that he goes into. Basically, the contract stuff is a whole nother can of worms that just pisses me off. But also vendors. 343, I think, not knowing much about, you know, studio development, but it seems like 343 has always outsourced big parts of de their development. I don't know if you know this, but 343 didn't really make much of any of the armor in Halo 4, and I think Halo 5 as well. They outsourced that to other studios that didn't understand the culture of Halo enough to, like, actually make good-looking armor, right? They just got other studios to pick up, like, the parts that they didn't really want to. And so, I don't think that this is a really good way to develop a Halo game. Now, there seems to be a considerable amount of evidence that there is a cultural issue at 343, or at least was. Now, you have to remember that this studio, what it is now, is not what it used to be. A lot of the leadership, a lot of maybe the toxic leadership has moved on, moved on to other studios, other games, other franchises, just not working on Halo anymore. Not to mention that they are looking for a lot of positions that are empty, like Sketch just posted this a couple weeks ago, and he said basically they're looking for a new lead level designer, gameplay designer, game designer, audio director, studio art director, lead uh, game systems designer, and I looked at all these and it looks like all these are actually full-on appointment, not just contractor positions. Patrick Wren also said the people I worked with every day were passionate about Halo and wanted to make something great for the fans. They helped push for a better Halo and got laid off for it. Dev's still working hard on that dream. Look at Forge. Be kind to them during this awful time. Now, this was actually all posted in January of 2023. So this was during the big announcement of a bunch of layoffs where I think it was an estimate of 60 to 100 people were going to get laid off at 343. But that was actually mostly contractor positions, which is unfortunate because that's honestly where a lot of people that love Halo deeply, like me and you, have had their dreams come true. But all they get is a little window of time to work on the game. And they don't even like are not able to even grow and develop their skills with Halo. In fact, what we will read here soon is that you have a much better life just moving on, not working at Halo. What my source told me was that Halo is like a jumping off point. If you can just get into Halo for just a moment and put that on your resume, you can get hired for anything, right? And so the layoffs at 343 says, Patrick, should not have happened and Halo Infinite should be in a better state. The reason for both of those things is incompetent leadership up top during Halo Infinite development causing massive stress on those working hard to make Halo the best it can be. And that's what bothers me about the Fire 343 movement, right? Because it's really not most people at 343 causing issues. Why it definitely does seem that way. 
genuinely, I know a lot of people that work at 343. In fact, even a few Halo YouTubers have been hired there, like Pixel Flare or Wang Time, if you remember him. There's also Fletch or, you know, Ultimate Halo, Andy or Bravo, right? That guy. Point is, is that there's a lot of Halo fans that have been at 343 over the years, right? Now, Patrick says this, I've been at Respawn for a year and I'm still having to adjust and deal with the ramifications of it. It's been a learning experience and having to unlearn some things. And he's talking about things that he learned at 343, right? And this person says, also, I won't pretend to have all the answers. What I can say is I emerged from 343 completely burnt out with a fear of ever being a leader because of how much I watched my discipline leads be burned to the ground physically, mentally, and emotionally from fighting so hard. It seems like honestly, and we will read more about this in a moment, being at 343 was a very stressful, traumatic experience for some people. And it's very unfortunate because you know, a lot of the people trying to go for 343, working there, it's like a dream come true. And I see new developers and Halo fans get hired there occasionally on Twitter. And to see the excitement and, and then to see them like leave is 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 funny. I mean, they both seem kind of positive, but, you know, all these X 343 devs coming out, you know, my source actually watched Reb's gaming video, which is kind of what this video is based on. And he said that for the most part, this is true, right? For the most part, it seems that, you know, basically, I mean, like what Colby said here, you could feel the emotions of the room during this meeting. We were all thinking, did that really just come out of their mouth, right? Which is that we need to shut up and do our effing jobs, right? And, you know, there just seems to be a lot of, and, and not really even many people doing this, but the, the incompetent leadership really does a lot of damage across the board. And it makes sense why Halo Infinite is and was in the state that it is and, and ultimately the reason why they got rid of seasons was because the game failed they could not keep up with a live service game they could not keep up with the free-to-play model that other games easily can like you know fortnite for example or even hell divers which has been doing great so far right um and so what the hell happened here i i genuinely think that um the studio has been understaffed there's been really toxic, incompetent leadership. And honestly, in the industry, no one wants wants to work at 343. They only want it on their resume because once they get there, it has been such a miserable experience for Halo fans, real Halo fans. And I, I can see the love in Halo Infinite. I really can. I think this game increased the quality across the board in a lot of ways. I would say it honestly, in some ways, contends with Halo 3 as far as the gameplay and the story goes and i know some of y'all might hate that but i do think that the story the music and the the mechanics of how the game functions like how you pick up equipment instead of like loadouts like halo reach introduced i think halo infant has better gameplay than halo reach and halo 4 and halo 5 and this didn't happen by accident right there was a lot of fighting for it i think so summary here is a lot of incompetent rude leadership that festered a terrible culture and over hiring of contractors which is basically just a way to save money basically pay out for instead of paying for employees and their health insurance and you know benefits they want to hire contractors to come in but see this backfired all the money that they saved over the years doing this method of basically outsourcing the game itself was basically leading the game into what we have today which is barely complete barely finished just now after what was it like almost nine years since halo 5 release they finally were able to release halo 6 uh, where it's complete and finished i mean do we need to wait another nine years for them to learn the same thing i'm not so sure i mean it seems like xbox is kind of reorganizing right now and i'm very nervous about the future of halo and halo 7 is it going to make the same mistakes here? Because I know 343 has learned a lot of things, but they also seem to not learn many things as well. Like, it's hard to say if this is going to happen again. In summary, I just hope that Microsoft learned their lesson. They tried to cut corners and the game flopped. 
Meanwhile, they're dropping $79 billion on other studios and then firing half of the employees on those studios during a economic recession. I don't understand why people celebrate Microsoft buying Bethesda and Call of Duty and these other franchises. There is nothing to celebrate about that. And I just think that 343 is a part of this massive corporate giant that has kind of lost it's it's so big now that i feel like they're kind of failing to do the most basic of jobs um and that is really discouraging so it really comes down to like the middlemen like the boss at 343 the studio heads and basically what my source told me that has confirmed most of this is that 343 at least as far as a, a few years ago seems to operate as a completely different business than Microsoft yes they are owned but they almost are like a free agent that is very autonomous in their own decisions so whether that's still true or not I don't know you know Bonnie Ross stepped down it's very likely that she got fired or just decided to leave early when she was already planning to leave you know because she's out of the company now she left back in 2022 and a lot of people point the finger at her we still got people like Kiki Wolfkill that are basically the executive producer on the Halo TV show, which seems to be like one of the last, I think Frank O'Connor also stepped down. I really don't know much of their parts in actual active development, but all we keep hearing from so many X343 is that it is the, it is the higher up management that is causing problems. So a lot of people think it's those people, although there is no clear confirmation about that. But one thing is for sure is that there is a lot of disconnect. The Glassdoor reviews seem to be basically saying the same thing at the end of the day is that it's very disconnected, right? The management does not give the smaller guys a chance to really spread their wings. They don't really get credit or promotion for doing the right things. And this is all just corporate blab, right? I mean, it's all crap. So, you know, I think that Halo 7 is definitely moving into Unreal Engine. Looking at these job postings, there seems to be quite a lot of mention with some of the additional and pre-preferred qualifications is experience working with Unreal Engine tools. And uh, I think at least about half of them, yeah. Yeah, some of them, some of them really want at least six years of knowledge of game engines. So most of them actually require some kind of or prefer Unreal Engine experience. So we've heard that, you know, we, we thought that they were going to do that. Uh, you know, Slipspace Engine is kind of in a fixable, like workable state now, I think. But I still think that they're going to move into Unreal Engine. It's still uncertain if Microsoft is ever going to move into working on something like with... Um, you know other studios and ips working on halo but with that being said guys i think this might just be my last video ever on this topic and i struggled making this video you know after watching reb's gaming video and, and like compilation of this it, it just kind of depressed me i've been talking about this for a couple years i want to move on i want to move forward i want to talk about halo 7 i want to talk about hope you know things that halo is about right hope and mystery and excitement and uh and this is not it right halo 7 i mean sorry halo infinite will be a forever known as a flop even if it does fully recover now and there's still a few people a few stragglers hanging on to hope but even the optimistic people seem pretty negative these days about this game even though it's in, in the best state it's ever been in so many people are rubbed raw from all of this crap it makes sense why people have left i mean you you look at like how many content creators there are left on halo there's not many right it's like exclusive content creators on halo yeah, there's not many. And so you guys let me know what you think about all this. Do you have any input? Did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comment section below and I'll catch you in the next one soon. All right, you take care. Uh, let's move forward and let's look to the future, right? Moving, moving on this year, right? <laughs> all right, guys. See you soon. Bye.